Hello, so the real story is that Uganda and Rwanda have stepped up the fight in the eastern part of Congo. So as of today morning, there have been reports that certain armored vehicles were basically unleashed from Uruchuru, meaning they entered Congo from Ugandan side, and those vehicles have been identified by the United Nations peacekeepers as Rwandan defense force vehicle some of them have this service to air missile so the drone that was sent there by the united nation peacekeepers also known as monusco uh, was shot at using a service to air missile fired from one of these armored vehicles that are supposed to be rwandan now a lot of people start saying that is not true but Rwanda is the only country in that region that have this type of vehicles. They are from China. They are Chinese made uh, six-wheeler armored vehicles. Uganda doesn't have those ones. And Congo definitely doesn't have those ones. So they are from Rwanda. And this vehicle was spotted moving from Ruchuru all the way to Kichanga. Today in the morning, someone took a photo from the town of Kichanga, uh, where one of those vehicles was passing a convoy uh, that was headed by one of those vehicles and it was covered on top with a kind of a, a you know a canvas or a tent to conceal the service to air missile so that means that the Congolese jets are under threat as Rwanda has given one of their service to air missile platform to these M23 rebels to try to shoot down the Sukhoi Su-25 jets that bombed them last week on Wednesday. And last week on Wednesday, we witnessed the attempted, uh, you know, attack or, you know, attempted capture of the town of Sake by M-23 rebels, which was repassed. And one of the equipment or systems that helped to repass these rebels back was the bombing from the Sukhoi Su-25. So today, the answer to that is that Rwanda has given several of their service-to-air missiles to try to shoot down these jets. That is the latest news. And I'm going to show you in detail what I'm talking about. But before I do that, I want to back up my claim from a report from the UN. So uh, come with me as I show you what I'm talking about. So as I was telling you, uh, according to a, a, a report from the UN, and that is uh, published on this website here, is that the M23 rebels or the rebellion in Congo, uh, according to the UN, that is, is that the Rwandan army is using service-to-air missiles. So the story is everywhere. Even the AFP were the first one to say, to talk about this uh, re report. And according to the AFP, uh, I'm going to read, according to the AFP, they are saying Rwandan army is using the service-to-air missiles system in eastern congo and that was 14 hours ago according to the report so i'm going to read what they say they say that the rwandan army is supporting m23 rebels in an escalation conflict in eastern congo and it is using sophisticated weapons such as service to air missile according to the iun document seen by afp on monday that is yesterday and amid intensifying in uh, fighting amid intensifying fighting in congo a suspected rwandan defense force mobile service to air uh, system fired at a united nation observation drone last wednesday without hitting it that is according to the uh, that report and external military intelligence from france who are there on the ground they support the assessment that the suspected uh, WZ-551, which is a six-wheeler infantry fighting vehicle, is from Rwanda. So the photo was taken of that vehicle and the, it was taken to some intelligence in France and they confirmed that that vehicle with, with the, uh, from those two photos, according to this article, two aerial images, attached to the report show a six-wheeled armored vehicle with a radar and missile launcher system on the roof so after these intelligence from france analyzed that 
they confirmed it is owned by Rwanda. And I will tell you that this no other country in East Africa has those system. Now for the vehicle, the WZ551, Kenya has them. We've seen them in Somalia, Kenya has them. But Uganda doesn't use them. They don't use those ones. And the other country in the region that has them is Tanzania and Rwanda. But the Tanzanians and the Kenyans do not use the ones that have radar mounted on top of them like this one. It's only Rwanda that has this one. Because Kenya doesn't have any reason why they would need such a platform to shoot down planes. Because the enemy, which is mostly Al-Shabaab, they don't fly drones, they don't own planes. The only country that has them is a country that would want to shoot down planes from another country, and that is Rwanda. And I've seen in their training in, in, in Kigari in Rwanda, they, they usually have them. So uh, from this photo you can see, the top thing there, if you've ever watched the movies, is the radar. And it is spins around in a clockwise or sometimes in an anti-clockwise uh, movement, depending on the design. And it, the, this, the, the spinning around in circles is when the, the radar is trying to track, you know, by throwing radar signals and then waiting for them to be reflected back and calculating the kind of object they are reflecting back from. Normally, that's how they track planes. So that is a radar. In the middle of the photo, you can see some kind of glass, kind of cameras, CCTVs. That is a laser uh, locator or a laser tr uh, tracker. So once the radar spots a plane and the laser points on that plane to track its movement, the laser is able to guide the missile from any of these eight ports, as you can see there are eight, to fire and track and go to that plane which is being painted using the laser, the laser tracker by this system. So it's very effective. It can shoot down fast moving planes like jets. And the reason why Rwanda is doing this is because they one, they don't want images to prove that now uh, the second phase of their war in Congo is coming. And according, and that, that is a fact, according to the people in the region of Ruchuru and, and, and Kichanga, they are saying that they've seen 11 Fuso truck. Fuso. Fuso is a, 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 a vehicle from Japan from the Mitsubishi. Or Isuzu, I don't know. Isuzu, Fuso, or Mitsubishi. It's Isuzu, Fuso. So that's what they were saying. And these trucks were full of soldiers, which included M23 rebels and some Ugandan soldiers, according to the people there. They said the uniform, though it didn't have a flag, is the one that Ugandan troops use. They wear that. So the people in Ruchuru, because it's a district next to Uganda, they know that. They say that they've seen Ugandan troops and some M23 in 11 Fuso trucks moving from Bambo to Mweso and then others are saying they've seen the same convoy of trucks leaving Mweso going to Kichanga. So that is a, a, a fact. So the report also goes ahead to say that the UN's MONUSCO peacekeeping mission in Congo, doc, which is the one that prepared that document, and also sent these photos. They have in the past, no past reporting of known armed groups possessing the training or the money or the capital or the resource to operate and maintain a mobile service to air missile system. So because MONUSCO usually makes weekly reports, they've never seen a rebel group in the whole of East Congo that can own, operate this kind of system let alone a rebel group. There are very few army, you know, armies in, a, in Africa that can operate this one because you need to be trained on how to use that locating system, the targeting system, the computers in that system, in this machine, so that you can be able to track a target and fire. Because these missiles are very expensive. I'm sure one of them costs about $10,000. So if you fire one, it's like you're filing a new Corora, you know, vehicle on that target. So you don't want to waste it.
So rebels can't be given this unless they know how to use it. And they were saying these photos were taken by this observation drone about 70 kilometers north of the city of Goma. Now I'm going to take you to the Google Earth. This is Goma. I'm going to imagine where 70 kilometer would be north. And we are, not, we are going to use uh, this map here and use this measurement from Google uh, Maps. So 70 around there, 70, 70, there, 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 there. So let's zoom in and find out which now you can see. It was spotted around here, Nyanzare, moving south to Mueso. And if you look at the road, the road goes to this part. And then it branches east to Bambo, this Bambo around here. And then comes south to Ruchuru and all the way to Bunagana. And the reason why I'm saying this, there's no way Rwanda would have moved this vehicle through here, Kibumba. That's a location controlled by Wazalendo. There's no way they have, they could have used it through this forest of uh, Virunga. It's, it's not somewhere you can pass with a vehicle. It's a forest. It, it has trees, hundreds of them. Okay, so these are forests, as you can see. Vehicles, there's no road here. A vehicle can't easily move through a forest like this one. So the only other route is going through north to the border with Uganda, Chanika, entering Uganda, going through this town of Kisoro. So the people in Kisoro, if you have photos of this vehicle because you saw it, share it with us. And then com coming back to Bunagana and entering Congo through Ruchuru. So the vehicle came from Ruchuru. It went up maybe, but it is somewhere around here. It's coming south. In the morning today, someone saw it in this region, Kichanga, this is the town of Kichanga, right? Someone, there's a photo I'm going to show you. Someone took a photo on this roundabout when the vehicle, which was in front of the convoy of about 20 vehicles, 11 of them are these trucks we are calling Fuso. Four other trucks were carrying ammunition boxes and, 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 and other type of equipment, right? So it was seen around here in Kichanga. We try to get a vantage. It was seen here in Kichanga. So it's going to be moving south through Burungu and towards Sake. So they are coming. Hundreds of these fighters. Other photos are showing us of... Uh, Hundreds of M23 fighters crossing through here. They were seen crossing through here. I'm going to show you photos. You see this part with green bush shrubbery, right? So these are photos that was taken from here by a drone yesterday. And it shows hundreds, almost thousands of M23 fighters crossing through this green shrubbery here around near this smaller mountain called Nyamurajira. They are coming to converge around here, around here in Kingi, believe me. They are coming to Kingi and they, they are going to wait for the reinforcement to come to Kingi and they are going to attack the town of Sake from the north. They are not hiding it this time and Rwanda has the service to air missiles to shoot down any drone that will come to expose them they have the service air missile, this one here, to shoot down any jet. You know, the Skoi Su-25 jets that bombed M23 last week. They are going to shoot it down using this. I hope the Congolese people in government are watching my video because if you send your Sukhoi, they are going to shoot it down. This one, this here. But I hope the Congolese Special Force uh, managed to attack that group and capture this vehicle. If we are able to capture this vehicle as Congo and display it to the world to see, then Rwanda should be asked to stop. Of course, everyone knows that Rwanda is supporting M23. Actually, this war is 
sponsored by Paul Kagame. But capturing such an expensive equipment would be a great win for Congo to do. Remember, uh, that's what is happening there. Now, the report also goes ahead in the report. The document also notes that M23 and Rwanda have also been using uh, numerous weapons against aircraft and they use, they carry anti-aircraft guns and man-powered mobile air defense system. This one we saw, they have. It looks like this. It's also made from China. They carry the 9K33 uh, or Igla 9K, copy a copy of the Igla, uh, Russian Igla that is manufactured in China. They have them. We saw them. It's the same copy that Paul Kagame used in 1994 on the 6th of April in the in the evening to shoot down a plane carrying the Rwandan president and that is what started the genocide in Rwanda. Paul Kagame started the fighting in in Rwanda. And there are stories I've read that actually he has been planning to assassinate the president of Congo, Felix Kisekedi. He he doesn't care. He that's what he thinks. He's a murderer. He doesn't give uh he care about the consequence of his actions because he's supported by uh the United States and the United Kingdom because of the minerals in Congo. So that is the story. Uh, today, it means that in the coming days, we are going to see serious fighting of between Rwanda, Ugandan forces and this M23 trying to take the town of Sake. So if you are in Sake, uh, I would just advise you to move away from Sake for now. Uh, you will come back. If they destroy your houses, you will build another one. The most important thing is you need to live so that we can win this war. So anyone in Sake, if you are not a young man who can fight, just move from the town of Sake. It's a fact. These people are coming.